Hey card makers, I'm Trisha Morris at Club Scrap with the In Transit Card Kit Assembly Workshop. We are going to make a dozen gorgeous cards and your kit even comes with the envelopes that you need to send them. So we got you all set to go. I've already printed my copy of the instructions, so printing this for you is optional, but if you'd like to follow along, that's always gonna be a download. I'm also using my accordion pocket file to keep organized. So we'll be putting everything for the first set of cards into pocket A, then B and C and so on. And then everything going into D are going to be the, the scraps that you can go ahead and incorporate later on if you want to embellish your cards further. I've got two little hook and loop dots here, which I'll then place under my Fisker's trimmer that I've got here ready to go. And also if you don't happen to have a trimmer like this, I can't recommend this one enough. So keep your eyes peeled to pick up one of these uh, Fisker's trimmers if you don't already have one. You'll also need a scoreboard, but that will come into play a little bit later, as well as your basic supplies like scissors, tape, that kind of a thing. I always try to list all of the supplies that I use uh, right away at the top so you can see if, if you're missing something that you might need. And um, then I'm going to go ahead and sort this paper so we can get to trimming. So I'll just set aside all those embellishments for later. And when I'm sorting the paper, I usually like to hold it up and vertical so I can see it from the top edges and then sorting is a little bit easier. So the first piece I want you to look for in your paper stack is just a sheet of plain ivory. And you really wanna make sure that it's plain on both sides. Then we're looking for blue. Now in this kit, you're gonna find a shade of paper that looks kind of like a bluish gray. We're just gonna call it gray for clarity. And then we have this other blue. So let's just take one of the blue sheets. Then we have a metallic and we're calling it metallic sand. And it's just a beautiful, rich, heavyweight paper. And then finally, we're gonna grab one of the gray pieces back to one blue. You'll notice the texture on the blue paper is on both sides. Then black. This one kind of has a really pretty, almost like a linen-like texture on one side, but it's more smooth on the other. So I'll just put it down, uh, uh, texture side down on my trimmer. And then the other metallic sand, and then the other gray. Next, let's grab both of the prints. And again, this is why I told you to check to make sure that the ivory was plain on both sides, because this is ivory on the back. So just make sure you have the prints here and put both of them face down, followed by the cut apart that has the large tag shapes face down, and then the last piece of paper you should have in the stack, the last sheet of cut aparts. Okay, so I'm gonna flip everything back on over to the ivory we'll start with. And I'm gonna to turn to page one of my instructions where I have my first cutting diagram. Now, according to this, we need to trim four pieces of paper the exact same way in order to recreate these cuts. If you're new to this, just follow along with me and you may want to just slow down your playback speed a little bit, maybe adjust it to 0.75 or even 0.5, that'll slow me way down. Okay, so what we first need to do though is check the grain direction of the paper. Later on, we'll be folding it. So we want to make sure we always fold with the grain instead of against the grain, which is going to be much harder to do. So just hold the paper by an edge, check the, to make sure that it dips easily top to bottom when we put it in the trimmer. And I always put an arrow on that diagram to, to reflect that. So we're dipping top to bottom on the ivory. And if you're feeling brave, let's trim two at a time. So I'm gonna check my blue for dipping. This is very stiff. This just droops and that's what we want to happen. Okay, so let's trim these together. And again, if you don't feel comfortable doing them at the same time, just do them one at a time, it's totally okay. So we'll begin at nine and three quarters. And if you're new, just find the whole number nine and then go to the left three vertical columns for that three quarters. So nine and a quarter and a half and three quarters. Always stabilize on the clear bar, especially because we're using two sheets of paper. We don't want it moving around. And then slide down to five. Stabilize. Rotate this five inch piece and trim at nine. And notice I haven't moved anything else other than the piece I'm working with here on the base. Now you've made this larger piece. This is gonna become um, a, a base of one of our cards and we need to score it later. So I'm gonna keep a separate pile over to the right of all the pieces that we're gonna go back and score. So just set these pieces aside. The very next piece you can place in pocket C. And by piece, I mean both of the ivory and the blue. Pocket C. 
and then pick up the next strips okay these are four and three quarter by 12 and we'll trim at 11 and a quarter nine and a half and six and three quarters That's six and three quarters so this larger panel pocket C the medium panel and the small panel as well those will go on pocket C and then you have these pretty small little pieces those you can either uh, dispose of or put them in pocket D and then finally we have this two and a quarter by 12 inch strip our first cuts gonna be at 11 and three quarters again that's 11 and three quarters and then five and three quarters and then take the five and three quarter inch piece and just rotate it so it's vertical and cut at two okay now we should have a set of panels that are slightly larger than the others these actually will nest and that also goes in pocket C and with that last cut you made a few little scraps those I'm just gonna throw away okay now we're gonna do all that again we're gonna take this beautiful metallic sand check our grain dipping top to bottom and then this beautiful shade of gray top to bottom and repeat so our first cut is again at nine and three quarters and then five rotate and trim at nine and set this piece aside to be scored take the remaining little strips those go in pocket C then we're gonna make a bunch of uh, trims on this next one eleven and a quarter nine and a half and six and three quarters this big panel in pocket C along with also the medium the small pocket C again and then the extra small you can throw those in D for I didn't use it <laughs> I didn't officially use them now this last strip again 11 and three quarters five and three quarters and then a rotation so it's vertical and trim at two this is probably the weirdest cut now when you do this again you'll appreciate this stabilizing bar that's what holds everything in place while we make that sort of awkward cut to make the two sets of nesting panels all of that going into pocket c as well and then you can circular file those little scraps okay now that was step one <laughs> there aren't that many steps which is nice so we four more sheets now get trimmed a little bit of a different way but our grain direction still dips easily top to bottom so this next piece this is blue and then black dipping nice and easy top to bottom okay first cut now is at 11 and three quarters and then six and a quarter then rotate and trim at 11. All right, so this large piece grows up to become a card base. Set it aside to be scored. And then these longer pieces you may put in pocket D if you wish. Pick up the next piece. We'll trim at 11 and 7. Okay, this larger piece grows up to become a card base where are we going to put it in our pile to be scored and then this other rectangle we need to trim this horizontally at five and a quarter and then put that in pocket a and then you've got like some really skinny strips you know like these long ones sometimes you can use them if you want to save them that's fine and throw them in there and the other really, really skinny strips you can dispose of that leaves you with these two one inch pieces. And these also need to be trimmed at five and a quarter. And then we'll put those in pocket A as well. When, when I was running through this for my proofing session to make sure everything was accurate, I always forget to make those last two little cuts. So I'm glad I remembered today. All right, now checking green again, dipping top to bottom and then dipping top to bottom now if you're this is your first time and you're like oh my gosh this is insane just trust this whole process 
take your time. And the practice that you do month after month will make you better and better at this. And once you master it, you're going to be amazed at how your efficiency increases. All right, we're going to cut this at 11 and 3 quarters again. And 6 and a quarter. Rotate and trim at 11. Another big piece for a card base. Something for pocket D. And this next larger pieces, we're going to cut at 11. And seven. You can set aside this larger piece for scoring. Pick up the next rectangle, both of them. <laughs> and we'll trim horizontally at five and a quarter. And then I'll go in pocket A. Then you have the little strips. Same thing, we're going to cut just a little chunk off of those at five and a quarter. Once again, if you'd like to hang on to the strips, sometimes those can be fun little additives for cards. I, mine usually end up in the circular file, and unless you have a use for these tiny ones, those can be thrown away. Moving on to page two of our instructions, and we're almost done already with all the trimming. In this case, for this particular print, you do not need to worry about the grain direction, and the print is kind of faces every which way, so it doesn't really matter how you put this in the trimmer. And we're going to cut at 11 and a quarter, and six. You're going to love this next step. Rotate the six by 12 and trim on every even number. So it's going to be 10, 8, six, four, and two. All right, now gather up all of those little strips and put them all in pocket B. Next, grab the larger piece that remains. We're going to cut a little differently this time. This It's at ten, seven and a half, five, and two and a half. All right. Now, if you just sort out what we've got here, you're going to have four larger size strips and then one that's a little shorter. Take the larger ones, all four of them, they go in pocket A, and then this little strip you can put in pocket D. Now, it may seem a little weird, but we're going to take this narrow strip and trim it at ten and a half. And if you want, sometimes I rest the top edge of the strip along with the bottom edge of my inch markings so I can see a little better. So that's at ten and a half and five and a quarter. And both of these can go on pocket A. It was going to be a scrap, but I used it and it looked really nice, so I thought I would just add it to the instructions and then you can dispose of this little rectangle. Piece. Now we can take this next piece. We should check our green direction here, though. So it, it, I want this time, it's going to be different. I want it to dip easily from the left to the right. So this was kind of stiff. This is kind of droopy. So let's cut that direction at 10 and 6. Now we're going to rotate the 6-inch piece and trim on all the numbers divisible by 3. So we'll start at 9 and six and three and we'll stack all of those rectangles up and they're all going to go into pocket B and next we'll pick up this strip this is currently four by twelve and we're going to do the same thing we're going to trim at nine six and three so all those numbers divisible by three and you thought you were done with math when you graduated from high school college whatever now these four little pieces, I want you to flip them over to the, to the ivory side and place them on the stack of papers to be scored. Pick up the next strip and trim it in half at six. And that's going to go in B. Now we've arrived at the cut apart time. And this you, you can do with or without me. It's totally your choice. If you're new, just follow along with me and I'll give you some tips. First of all, the outer perimeter of these cut aparts has a little hashtag. That's a cutting guide for you to trim the outer perimeter to the exact 12 inch size that we need. Um, our commercial trimmers can't do this accurately enough. So that's why we've added this little extra piece around the perimeter so that you can just do that last cut and get it nice and accurate. Now, once you've trimmed two sides, you should be able to measure at the 12 on this side and it should line up 
with your blade. If it doesn't, you can make some corrections at this point. And then rotate one last time. And get a nice clean cut there. Sometimes at first cut, it's a little bit hard to see, so I might do that one intentionally uh, shy of the of the cut mark on the first round so I can I can um, make it perfect later. Looks really good. Let's go ahead and place this in the trimmer now with this long strip on the right and the two smaller strips kind of on the side here. And we'll trim at 11. And then I always just make sure that the blade is going to cut between the pieces of artwork. And then five and a half. Give that a rotation. And we'll trim at 11. Nine and a quarter. Seven and a half. And three and three quarters. So notice I'm letting everything pile up. I'm going to file all these pieces together. Before we file these, I'm just going to show you a little tip. This is going to become a tag shape. And if you really want to, at this point, you can turn the tag into the trimmer and bring the blade all the way down just to where it's about to cut. Then line up the, the artwork with the blade and then slice that off. This to me is probably the quickest way to do it, but you should do it if you have you know, some confidence in your trimmer and in yourself. Otherwise you could use scissors, you could use a craft knife and cutting mat, but now I have some nice tag shapes here. And we're gonna file those in pocket B. And then we have these other two little pieces. A quick tip for these, as long as we're here, if you happen to have a circle punch, this is a one inch circle punch, and you can slide this around the corner of your piece and then back off in about an eighth of an inch. And I'm just eyeballing that. And I've had really good results. So just back off on it, find it, and then back away, find it, and back away. And that's going to give you some nice rounded corners on these pieces. And you can take both of these and file them in pocket C. And now we have this little scrap. I think I ended up using this in pocket C. A little tip in advance, I believe I trimmed this down to five inches wide. So this is a bonus tip you get for watching the video. So this goes in pocket C. <laughs> Everyone else will have to do it later, but we won't. Okay, now we're going to repeat this whole process. So 11 nine and a quarter, seven and a half, and three and three quarters. Once again, just a reminder, you can clip the corners for your tags and file those pieces in pocket B. You can clip the corners with your rounding punch, or with your circle punch rather, and file these in pocket C. Or you can just use scissors as well. You don't have to have all the gadgetry. And then this one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna trim into a five inch piece. I'm taking a little off of each end, so it's the same on each end. We'll put that in C. And if you want, I don't have instructions to do this there either, but you can trim this at 10 and five. And this is also gonna go in pocket C. And you can just dispose of any other little scraps that you happen to have there. And we'll move right on to the next sheet of cut apart, so we have to perform the same exact task of removing the outer perimeter. So just go ahead and do that. I'm sure you can manage without me talking you through that. Okay, with that done and my little scraps removed, let's place this back into the trim room with all the airmail pieces on the far right. And we're gonna begin by trimming at 10, then seven and a quarter, and four and a half. Then rotate and we'll cut at 10 and a quarter, eight and a half, six and three quarters, and five. Now I actually ended up not using these pieces. Jack designed them just because they were they were just a open area on the piece, but I'm gonna throw it in D for now because I just didn't use it. And I didn't need it. <laughs> and then all the rest of the strips from that first section go into pocket C. And then we have a bunch of squares and a little end piece. So we're gonna trim this end at 11, the piece that says go explore. Then eight and a quarter, I do this a lot, five and a half, and two and three quarters. 
Okay, so these squares will go in pocket A and then go explore C. Then take the next strip, put go explore on the right. We'll once again trim at 11, 8 and a quarter, 5 and a half, 2 and 3 quarters. Gather everything up except the go explore. All the squares go in pocket A, go explore, C again. C, again. <laughs> Okay, now the airmail pieces, I believe these are going to go on the even numbers. So 10, 8, 6, 4, and 2. This would have been a scrap, but Jacqueline cleverly designed it. I think she thought maybe the outside of the envelope, but I found a home for all of these on the card. So four of them go in pocket B, and two of them will go in pocket A. That's all the trimming, except for maybe, let me show you one little trick while I have the trimmer here. I've got these little airmail envelopes, and I'm going to take some glue from a needle-tipped applicator and just dispense it along the very, very top of the flap on the envelope and then close it. And if you want, you could do that to all of them, just to save yourself a little bit of time later on. And we have the trimmer out, we might as well take care of this. Now take each envelope and from the top edge we're going to place it vertically into the trimmer so that we're removing the seam. Now these are not made to perfection so just kind of make sure the whole seam is being removed from the top only. What we're going to do is kind of turn this more into a pocket so that we can insert something into that top edge. And then you can go ahead and place these in pocket B. I'm going to swap my trimmer for my score pal. All right, these are all of the pieces we set aside to be scored, and we're going to tackle them in the order they landed just to try to keep it easy for you. The first piece I'm going to place horizontally into the trimmer. This is currently three by four, and the plain side is on the wrong side. Okay, that's intentional. And we'll score this horizontally at three. So I'm just again using a score pal. And I'm using a round tipped stylus. I feel like that just makes a really nice score line. And then you can, once all four are done uh, being scored, you can put them in pocket A. Now I have two pieces that are just kind of like a fat rectangle. We're gonna score these horizontally. So you should see seven here and five and a half here. We're gonna score at four and a quarter. And the same for the other one. So it's horizontally, there's the seven. We'll score at four and a quarter. And if you just go down a little ways into your stack, you'll find two more of those to score at four and a quarter. Now, on this black with the texture here, make sure the texture side is facing up and score at four and a quarter for both of those as well. And then all four of these little pieces can go into pocket A. Now we have these big, long pieces, and I have special scoring instructions for them. We're going to begin by scoring horizontally, so it should say 11 here and 6 and a quarter here, I believe. And we're, we need to do a flip. So first, we'll score at 2 and a quarter and 8 and 3 quarters. So that was 2 and a quarter and 8 and 3 quarters. Now flip the paper from the bottom to the top and score at three and seven eighths, so that's halfway between three and three quarters and four, you'll find three and seven eighths, and seven and one eighth, so that's just between seven and seven and a quarter. What I like about this score pal is that every little eighth inch is marked and there's a channel on all every eighth inch, which is perfect for our needs. So again, two and a quarter, eight and three quarters, flip bottom to top, three and seven eighths, seven and one eighth. On the black uh, texture, let's start with the smooth side up when we do the two and a quarter and eight and three quarters. Flip now so that we have the texture facing up and we'll score at three and seven eighths and seven and one eighth. And one more time, this, this uh, dark blue doesn't really matter so much. The texture is on both sides. So last one, two and a quarter, eight and three quarters. Flip bottom to top, three and seven eighths, seven and one eighth. Ta-da, and that's a bonus too because I don't cover that in the instructions, that little flip. All of these are gonna be used in set B. 
So I'll put that in the second pocket there, in the B pocket. And now all I have left is just these last four. This is going to be nice and easy to score horizontally at seven. And I know it feels weird because we're not scoring it. We can score really anything in half today. We're going to score horizontally at seven. And that last piece again at seven. And all of these are used in set C. These are going to make a five by seven card, believe it or not. That's all the prep work. Look at that envelope of work that we've done. It's all ready to go, all in one transportable place. And I'll swap out my score pal for my adhesive gun. Now I've turned to page three of my instructions and, and you'll see a picture of every card we're gonna make. And basically what we'll do first is deal out all the pieces and figure out what card they belong to. And then we'll assemble one to card together and all the rest of the cards in the set are assembled the same exact way. So just do that to save a little bit of time. Um, so when you empty everything out, you can do a little, just a little bit of sorting if you want. I like to have all the pieces kind of that are the same size, have them together. And <laughs> I kind of have a little bit of a mess here, but it's not too bad. So now I can see everything. It's, it's just like, you know, shuffling cards. Now, I'm going to begin by distributing the, the color of the card that each base will have. So we'll start with that gray, that smoky gray shade, and then blue. Then beneath it, we'll put the black and then the metallic sand color. Okay, now on the inside of, we have these larger panels, right? So I'm going to go blue, black, sand, and gray. Then you have, should have some panels that have printing on them. We're going to put one on each of these cards, just to deal them out, right? Then we have the white or ivory panel that has the art on the back side, one for each card. That's nice and easy. Um, let's see, we have these little strips that are plain. Let's put a black one here, a sand, the gray, and the blue. Two of the strips have prints. Those are going to go on the first two cards. You have the two small airmail pieces. Those will go on card three and four. And then let's distribute these uh, sentiments. So I don't always whoop, but when I do, there it is. <laughs> Wherever you go, go with all your heart. And I believe this has the congratulations on the inside. Perfect. Then you have bonjour. Bonjour, bonjour. That's fancy for hey. <laughs> and then you make the world a better place. So glad you're in it. That's the pair for set four. Again, all of these cards assemble the same way. So I'm not too worried about your ability to be successful with these three cards. We're going to do card one together and then I'll set these aside. And typically what I do is insert all of this into the envelope that belongs with this set of cards. That way all your pieces stay together in case you don't get to assemble them all right away. All right, forgive me if I don't follow the order in the instructions exactly. I'm just following my heart here. You got to follow this stuff with your heart as long as you get it right. Now, the rule of thumb here with score lines is that the bump of the score needs to go on the inside of the fold. How about we start with practicing that? I'll use a bone folder to burnish that fold. And then we have another piece that has a score line on it. It's this piece and the bump is here and that's intentional. I want this to go on the inside of the fold. If you want to burnish that, you can. And then I will take my corner chumper and a corner, a standard corner rounder punch, like even the one from Creative Memories that I got 20 some years ago, it's a quarter inch radius and that's what we want to use here. So I'm going to round the corners on the opposite end of this tab with the quarter inch setting of my corner chomper. I can do the same thing on this, uh, there it is, this is the inside sentiment. And then I don't always whoop, but when I do, just round the four corners of that. Okay, order of assembly is kind of important here. So I'm going to take this panel. This is four by five and a quarter. And I'm going to kind of hook the tab of this piece around the right edge of this vertical panel. Kind of like that, just like upper center. It's about an inch from the top, inch or less. Flip it over and I'm just going to adhere the tab. I'm also going to put adhesive on the back of this piece. Got some flailing adhesive here. Not too worried about that. And let's just open this card. Now make sure this flap is on the left. Open it. And this flap should be on the right. Center it. Okay. So this card is open. 
Nice. Now I can also, see how this fits right in there beautifully? I'll put some adhesive on this and I will add it to this flap on the left. And then I have this black strip. When this flap is closed and this is open, the strip should be centered between the remaining exposed area of the blue panel. And if all went well and according to my plan, this strip will nest beautifully right on top of the black. And it does, and that makes me so happy. Cool, right? Now you have the, I don't always whoop, but when I do piece, and we also have, there it is on the inside. So here's what we could do. I'm gonna take this uh, ribbon. This is the um, gray colored ribbon. And I got a nice angled cut here. I'll, maybe I'll just freshen that up just a little. And then I'm gonna make another angled cut with the angle going in the opposite direction. And I'm gonna fold this in half. So it looks kind of like a prize. And I'm gonna center it on this wing here that pops out. I'll grab a little tape or you could use your favorite adhesive if you wanted to. Then if you have never met our foam adhesive circles, these are great for, and you can, if you're, you know, frugal like me, <laughs> you can trim them in half. And that's what I like to do, just get double use out of them. So if I'm lazy, sometimes I'll even just, <laughs> Just use the whole ones and you can use your fingertips to easily then access the tab that removes the ta um, the backing and that's what I love about these I'm not messing around with trying to find the back of the, the piece okay then this just centers right onto its designated spot now you have a choice here you can put it on this side but I just thought it looked cool and I would center it right on the inside of the card with regular adhesive. And there it is. <laughs> okay, that was kind of perfect. So that's our card. Now, let me show you a few variations, very minor, that occur with the other cards in the set. So this is the one that we made together. Okay, and then I can show you, I'll set this one aside. These are my four originals. Here is the next one that has the ribbon. Everything went together the same. And the uh, airplane, the wood airplane, I used that same bookbinding glue from the needle tip applicator to attach it. Now, if you're concerned about these being mailable, just omit the plane. I don't want you to get in trouble with the post office. Otherwise, you gotta pay the extra for the hand cancel. Now, this one, I just added the cute little airmail piece, but this one does not have the print nested on the strip here. Love that. And I'm really glad I went with the inside out because it brings a little bit of that interest to the inside of the card. Works great. Okay, those are the four cards in this set. Moving on to set B. I've taken everything out of pocket B, and I'm going to spread this all out again in the order we need it. So the first uh, card base will be this metallic sand, and then the gray, the blue, and the black. So those are our bases. And each one, if you sort out everything you had by size, each one will have a wider print. So this is the three inch, I believe, three inch piece. Then each one will also get two of the other narrower panels. Those are two inches wide. So two of them. Okay. Each one's going to get an envelope. Each one will get a tag. So this is sending smiles across the miles. There's two like that, but there's ones that you're the best and one is thinking of you. So we'll, we'll switch this so it's just the same. Thinking of you is first, then you're the best. Then in Life's Adventures, may happiness be your destination. Love that. Happy birthday. And then a life is like a road trip. And I love how this is great for the guys because, you know, we like to send them cards too, but we don't always have what we need, right? I'm going to give each one of these an airmail, and now my pieces are distributed. All is well. And then I'm going to put card... Uh, four, three, and two aside, and we'll make this one together. Okay, I think um, if you just go ahead and make sure that the two score lines on the outside of your piece of paper have the bump, and um, we can still see where those score lines are, 
I think it would be nice and efficient if we took the three printed panels that we have and we're going to put adhesive on all of them. So one, two, and three. Okay, so this is cool. This wing here on the right, again, the bump of the score is right next to it. It's just a little easier to put these nesting panels on when it's flat rather than when it's uh, folded. Then this will go, the skinny one goes on the outside, the outer two scored areas, and then the inside scored area has a spot for the center panel. That's all there is to it. Then you can go ahead and fold in, so bury the bump of the score line on the outside. I find it easy to just flip the card over and then bury, the, here's another bump, so we're gonna bury it and look how this card, <laughs> it's absolutely perfect. And that's what it's supposed to do, it stands up. So I call this, cr very creative here, the stand-up card. Okay, now I can grab my corner rounder. If you happen to have that, again, any kind of corner punch. I've got the quarter inch setting here on the radius. And if you happen to have any kind of a hole punch, I typically use my crocodile, um, and, and it sets eyelids too, but any kind of a hole punch is fine for this stuff. Then, take some of this really beautiful, uh, plentiful um, metallic woven ribbon, and I'm gonna thread it through that hole. I'm, I'm making sure that I'm trying to spin this around here with the grain of the ribbon. I'm just gonna tie, tie this knot sort of at the front of the, the tag, and then do a standard bow. So once you're satisfied with the bow, just trim the ends. Again, you might want to give a fresh trim to this side. And we can insert the tag into the envelope at this point. Now, it's important that when you ad adhere this to the card, you don't adhere the tag. Only put adhesive on the back of the envelope and be aware that you don't want it extending, the adhesive extending beyond this front flap of the stand-up unit. So if you flatten the card and center this into the space, it should fit absolutely flawlessly. And if you didn't over it here, you don't want adhesive in that area so you can still stand it up with the envelope attached. And at this point, I can, I didn't use foam adhesive here. I thought I had plenty of dimension and you can just like pop that on. That's super cute. And then the very last thing you would do is add the suitcase and you can do it wherever you like. Now for, for that, I just take my bookbinding glue. This is wet glue, so you need to do this last. If you don't do it last, then you know you suffer the, the risk of it moving around on you. But once this suitcase dries in place on this card, that's not gonna go anywhere. So let's take a look at all of the cards in this set. You've got this one, again, that, that suitcase is secure and firmly attached. Again, if you don't feel comfortable having a charm attached for something you wanna throw in the mail, I usually have pretty good luck, but you know, just whatever you prefer. Here's the other one, just like it. And again, they all just assemble the same exact way. Very fun, you could write a little note on the back. Got plenty of room for that still. Um, on the margins here with a metallic pen, you got the back of the card too. So these are the standing stand-up cards, set B, and let's empty everything from pocket C and sort it by size. Well, I'm certainly glad I'm here to help you sort through all of this mess because this is a lot of panels. Um, what's neat though, I just want to point out about this particular formula, most of the pieces for set C come out of just one sheet of paper. So if you just, if you want to make more of these cards, just follow diagram number one and you'll have virtually everything you need, yes, everything you need to make more of that particular card style. I love those standalone formulas. So I'm taking the largest card base. We're gonna start with the metallic and then the ivory. Then we're gonna to go to the blue, the dark blue and the gray. So those be the four cards that we create. Now we have these larger panels, let's get those going. We've got the gray, the brighter blue, the metallic sand, and the ivory. Next I'm gonna distribute another panel that is the same color as the card base. So again, that's gonna be sand, ivory, blue, and gray. 
And then we have a slightly smaller panel than the one we just distributed. So that's going to be ivory, sand, gray, and blue. And let's find the smallest panel in the whole stack and match the previous color we just distributed. So ivory, sand, gray, and blue. <laughs> now we have two remaining nestables. Okay, so I'm going to distribute the larger one first. Blue, gray, ivory, sand, and then a contrasting color, gray, blue, sand, ivory. Wow, that was a lot of pieces and we still have a few more to go. We've got the front of our cards. So for, uh, let's see, together, forever, never apart. And then we're gonna do good friends and great adventures. Another good friends and great adventures, and then for all that we love deeply becomes a part of us. Let's do thinking of you here. Let the good times roll. Let the good times roll, and with heartfelt thoughts and sympathy. Now, if you look at these remaining strips, two of them, the art is positioned horizontally, so those are going to go with the let the good times roll. And then the vertically uh, oriented ones are going to go with heartfelt thoughts and sympathy with cards one and four, basically, in this arrangement. I did have the order a little screwed up, but either way, cards are all going to go together fine. And then we also have with those let the good times roll cards, I'm going to add the go explore with those. I know that was a lot of pieces. Don't worry about it. You will, if you just review this, it will all come together beautifully. Now I'm going to stack up all of these pieces and we're going to make the card together that has the blue base. That's going to give us the best color for some contrast with my work surface. And uh, let's just begin by taking the largest card base and we're going to fold to bury the bump of the score line on the inside of the card. And I will burnish this with my bone folder. This whole uh, card structure is basically a series of layering panels, so I don't want you to worry too much about the order of assembly. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add this larger mat to the inside of the card, and this little two inch flap is going to be on the outside. Okay, now there should be a small panel that will fit right within that small flap, so that needs to be on the front of the card. And then I'll layer that right there. It should fit perfectly. Now I'm going to take another panel that matches the color of the flap or in the base of the card. In this case, it's the blue. And I'm going to find another panel that nests on there and that's going to be the gray. And just nest this. Okay, for now we can kind of set that aside. I'm going to take this front greeting and I just happened to have oh good this is the one that I, I I took all the corners off so here's how this has to work I'm going to layer this on here and it's totally up to you if you want to follow through with the rounded corners if you have some like jewel dazzles or some brads you would like to throw into the corners there um, I'm just going to leave them squared off for the for this card and that's not what I did on my other ones and you'll see but either way I think it's gonna look fantastic so I'm just gonna leave them square in the interest of saving a little time I showed you during the trimming instructions how to round the corners and I'm gonna go ahead and put some adhesive on the back of the inside sentiment of this card the, the one that says let the good times roll and have that ready next I'm gonna take my card base and that little panel and I'm gonna knock down the panel so it's level left and right and with the bottom edge of my card the flap will be on the top now this piece will go in the opening so I'm just gonna make sure it's landing in the right place landing pun intended now if you want to add a little bit of ribbon because we did add ribbon we're gonna pull the same trick that we did with uh, card set A so this is with that beautiful blue taffeta. I love working with taffeta ribbon. I'm just trimming a small piece. I'll grab some tape. And I'm just going to test this for location. I want it to be going out the lower right side of this piece, kind of at the bottom area. Okay, good. And then you got to make sure you have adhesive just at the top and the bottom of the back of this piece. Do not put adhesive in the middle because it won't, um, then, then it will seal your card together permanently. 
realigning that bottom panel. I think I'm a little off. I'm going to realign that again. Pick up this piece with the adhesive at the top and the bottom. And I'm checking my alignment. I want to go the same from the top and bottom as I do from the left, approximately. You can see I'm eyeballing it, not measuring anything. And that's what hinges that upper and lower panel together. So that is slick. Now, lastly, if you want, we've got a nice little spot here. If you'd like to add this cool laser cut wood airplane, you can do that with, again, the book binding glue from the needle tip applicator works perfectly. It matches beautifully. And this is gonna be a wonderful card. Now on the inside, a couple of optional things you can do. Like you have this decorative strip. Again, it's horizontally oriented. So if it's not, just swap it out with one that is. And we can maybe add this along this top edge here. And then for this piece, you can just leave it as it is and maybe attach it in this spot. Um, I trimmed mine out with scissors and nested it onto a piece of paper that came from pocket D. Um, there's a couple of little scraps that will work, but for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and add this to the card and it's done. Here's my finished one that had the little nesting mat that looks really nice, kind of sets it off. Great cards. Okay, we have two vertical that you're going to make. And then the two horizontal are the same exact assembly, but you can see that the sentiment strip goes across the top. So if I was holding it vertical, it would have been here, but now we're going to go this way so that we can have a horizontal card. And this goes vertically. That's why this had to be vertically oriented. And then... This is a sympathy card. Very appropriate. It's happened to need a lot of these lately, it seems. So that is the rest of the cards for set C and for the entire workshop. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you love these card structures. And again, if you liked the one we just made, you can make more very easily. You can make a, a quadruple batch by taking four sheets of paper and following step one in your instructions. Have a lot of fun with this and I look forward to seeing you in class again soon. Thanks for joining me.